Hello YouTubers, this is Triple Seven Die Hard Forever coming at you with another highly anticipated and highly recommended model as I continue to play catch up. Today I'll be doing a review on a JC Wings Cafe Pacific Airbus A350 1000 XWB extra wide body aircraft and a 1 200 scale model in their current livery scheme. I purchased this model on eBay. That's the only way I can get it, and that's probably the only way you can get it too at this point. But before I go into details about this particular aircraft model, allow me to share you some information about the history of Cathay Pacific and how they came about and still operating strongly. Cathay Pacific was founded on September 24, 1946 in Shanghai, China by the late Sidney B. Kansai, who was born in 1914 and passed away in 1957, and the late Roy Farrell, who was born in 1912 and passed away in 1996. And although initially based in Shanghai, China, the two men eventually moved to Hong Kong, where they formally began Cathay Pacific. They named the airline Cathay, the ancient name that was given to China, and Pacific because Roy Farrell envisioned that the airline would one day fly across the Pacific, which actually became a reality in the 1970s, as Cathay Pacific will celebrate its 75th anniversary on September 24, 2021. The, Cath the Chinese name for Cathay Pacific actually comes from a Chinese idiom meaning grand and peaceful state and after Butterfield and Squire now known today as the Squire Group bought 45 percent of Cathay Pacific the company officially commenced operations on July 1st 1948 and was registered as Cathay Pacific Limited on October 18, 1948. Cathay Pacific is currently the world's 10th largest operating airline when measured in terms of sales and the world's 14th largest operating airline when measured in terms of market capitalization respectively, whereas the headquarters of Cathay Pacific is located at Cathay Pacific City, which is located along with its main hub and base of operations that's located nearby on the grounds of Hong Kong International Airport, which is approximately located on the island Chet Blackcock, which is located approximately 16 miles west of the Central District section of Hong Kong Island. Cathay Pacific also has a secondary hub that's located on the grounds of Taipei Taiwan International Airport that's located approximately 25 miles west of Taipei in the Daewon District section of Taiwan City, Taiwan. As of July 2021, or at the time of this video review posting, Cathay Pacific currently flies to 88 destinations in 46 countries and territories across Asia, Africa, Europe, North America and Oceania with the operating fleet of 160 aircraft that includes 42 Airbus A350s in which 27 of those are the Airbus A350-900XWBs and the remaining 15 are those are the Airbus A350-1000XWBs including this one here. And in addition to the 160 aircraft that currently operates in the Cathay Pacific fleet, the airline also has unfulfilled orders for an additional 39 more aircraft that includes six more Airbus A350s, in which three of those are the Airbus A350-900XWBs, and the remaining three are the Airbus A350-1000XWBs. And those aircraft, as we speak, are currently on back order and are awaiting delivery at the time of this video review posting. Also, as of July 2021, or at the time of this video review posting, Cathay Pacific is one of 11 airline carriers along with ANA All Nippon Airways based out of Tokyo, Japan, Asiana Airlines based out of Seoul, South Korea, Eva Air based out of Taipei, Taiwan, Garuda Indonesia based out of Jakarta, Indonesia, Hainan Airlines based out of Heiko, Hainan, China, Japan Airlines also based out of Tokyo, Japan, Korean Air based out of Seoul, South Korea, Lufthansa based out of Cologne, Germany, Qatar Airways based out of Doha, Qatar, and Singapore Airlines based out of Singapore to hold this prestigious honor of operating as a certified five-star airline carrier, according to the International Airline Review Firm, Skytrack Magazine, and the Airbus destination code, Cathay Pacific, on for this particular aircraft is 41. All right, everyone, let's take a look at the front of the box. Ain't much here, except what you see there. The uh, one 200 scale model, the computer generated picture of the aircraft, the Cathay Pacific title as well as the logo, the aircraft type right there, as well as the registration ship number. I'm not going to go into details on this whole box because it ain't nothing on the back of it, okay? Now I'm looking at this nice little metal mile stand that actually came with the model. 
And right on the bottom of the model stand, you see the Cathay Pacific title as well as the logo, the aircraft type, as well as the scale model information at the bottom of the uh, black of this model stand. Then you come up here, you see the black patent on this model stand. And the sole purpose of this black patent is not only to protect your model, but also prevent it from being damaged or scratched when you put your aircraft model on this particular model stand. Now you're looking at this plastic bag, and what you see in this plastic bag are the gear replacement doors, as well as two little toothpicks for these gear replacement doors. Please stay tuned, I go into detail for the sole purpose of these gear replacement doors for this particular aircraft model, okay? Now you're looking at the commemorative card that actually came with this model. You see the Cathay Pacific title, the logo, the computer generated picture of the aircraft, the SWI logo, the aircraft type as well as the registration ship number. Now I'm gonna let you see the information on the back of the card as well. Let's check that out. Now looking at the back of this commemorative card, you see all the specification concerning this particular aircraft. You can pause and read that if you like. In the meantime, I'm gonna keep this moving, all right? All right, with all the information out of the way uh, about the history of Cathay Pacific and how they came about, the little so-called little details here on the front of this box, plus the model stand that actually came with the model, the commemorative card that came with the model, as well as the gear replacements inside that plastic bag. With no further ado, here is the actual aircraft model. Let's check it out. There it is everyone, the JC Wings Cathay Pacific Airbus A350-1000XWB extra wide body aircraft in their current livery scheme in a 1-200 scale model. All right, allow me to share you some information about the Cathay Pacific Airbus A350-1000XWB, the extra wide-body aircraft, and how they became a part of your fleet, which is becoming a game changer for Cathay Pacific as we speak. Cathay Pacific became the second airline operator after launch customer recipient Doha-based Qatar Airways that acquired this prestigious brand new state-of-the-art aircraft as Cathay Pacific took delivery of its very first of its original order of 26 Airbus A350-1000XWBs, extra wide-body aircraft, that Cathay Pacific had originally placed orders for back on July 10, 2012. But unfortunately, eight of those Airbus A350-1000XWBs were subsequently converted to the Airbus A350-900 variant on September 13, 2017 which brought the actual order down to 18 and finally received their very first Airbus A350-1000XWB extra wide body aircraft, which bared the registration ship number B-LXA at a special delivery ceremony that was held at the Airbus Delivery Center facility that's located in Toulouse, France on June 15, 2018 then made its actual debut on July 1st, 2018 with its first inaugural validation flight when it flew from Hong Kong International Airport to Taipei, Taiwan International Airport and Taipei, Taiwan as Cathay Pacific Flight CX-484 for, for, for crew familiarization purposes allowing the maintenance crew, the flight crews, as well as the ground staff personnel time to get familiar with the aircraft per se before the actual international flight launch. Then fast forward two and a half months later, and that's when Cathay Pacific's very first inaugural international flight on this particular aircraft actually took place, which was on September 15, 2018. And that's when Cathay Pacific officially began utilizing this aircraft, when it actually flew from Hong Kong International Airport in Hong Kong to Washington Dulles International Airport in Dulles, Virginia, a flight that actually covered a total flying distance of 7,085 nautical miles, which equates to about 8,153 miles, and with an approximate flying time of nearly 17 hours nonstop, it officially became Cathay Pacific's longest nonstop flight in its route network, as Hong Kong has become the primary gateway base for this particular aircraft type, as the entire fleet of Cathay Pacific's Airbus A350-1000XWBs currently operates exclusively from Cathay Pacific's main operating base hub at Hong Kong International Airport. Cathay Pacific has ordered a total of 18 Airbus A350-1000XWBs to add to its fleet. And at the time of this video review posting, only 15 are currently operating in service, while the remaining three are currently on back order and are awaiting delivery, as this aircraft is destined to become one of the airline's official flagship jetliners for the Hong Kong-based airline, as Cathay Pacific expects all 18 of their Airbus A350-1000XWBs 
to be fully operating in their fleet by the end of 2021. Now let's talk about the livery scheme you see on this aircraft. This is the current livery scheme of Cathay Pacific, which was unveiled at a special ceremony that was held on November 1st, 2015 on the grounds of Hong Kong International Airport. The airline revealed a refreshed version of its previous livery scheme while maintaining their trademark brushwing logo on an all green tail. You see there. The current livery scheme also incorporates an updated and streamlined logo, a simplification of its color palette to three colors green, gray, and white. And the first aircraft that began sporting this livery scheme was a Boeing 777 300 ER jetliner aircraft, which bears the registration ship number B KPM as the Hong Kong based carrier expects to have its entire aircraft fleet repainted in this current livery scheme through their maintenance schedule by the end of 2022. So with all that information out of the way about the uh, history of this aircraft, how it came part of their fleet, which is coming a game changer, as this aircraft actually came the aircraft replaced the Boeing 747-400s, which was officially tired in 2016. And with the livery scheme you see here, with no further ado, let's get down to the nitty gritty and let me show you all the details on this aircraft now, shall we? Let's check it out. Alright, we're going to start at the front of the aircraft here on the port slash left side. We can see the actual nose gears right here, the nose gear struts, the nose gear uh, door featuring the partial registration ship number on the nose gear door, XA, the Peter tubes and static ports, what have you, the nose cone. To more Peter tubes right there, the cockpit windows as well as the windshield wipers. I'm going to give you a better visual view of those more later on in the model review. Please stay tuned for that part. But right between the cockpit windows and the L1 entrance door right here is the famous brushwing logo. And the previous brushwing logo used to consist of a calligraphic stroke against a green background. The stroke was intended to appear like a wing of a bird. However, as you can see near the nose of the aircraft, the brush wing logo has been enlarged in size and free from the green band that used to surround the nose, okay? And then you see the One World logo by the L1 door as well as the L2 door there and there. Cathay Pacific joined the One World lines along with American Airlines. British Airways and Qantas as one of the four founding members on February 1st, 1999, which consists of 14 airline members from six inhabited continents. And then we have the Cathay Pacific billboard tile right here above the windows. From 1994 to 2015, the Cathay Pacific name used to sit below the windows. Now, the Cathay Pacific title now sits above the windows. The font is the same. However, the letters are now uppercase and bigger. And then you see the gray band, which is stretches right here, which goes all the way to the back of the aircraft. I'll show you that right here. All right. The single gray band now runs across the lower half of the fuselage, linking the nose with the tail. Okay, I'll show you that earlier, all right? All right. Now looking at the center aircraft, and what you see is the engine, the massive engines right here. There's the engine lip, as well as the engine cones right there, realistic and detailed. These are the Rolls-Royce Trent XWB 97 turbofan type engines that are used on this particular Cathay Pacific Airbus A350-1000 XWB extra wide body aircraft. You also see the logo right there on the engine column there as well. But... Um, but before I turn this aircraft mile, you're looking at the uh, triple bogey gears right there, including the landing gear struts as well as the landing gear doors. Now I'm going to turn this aircraft mile around let you see the front of the engines and the turbo fan blades we spin. Let's check it out. Yeah. All right. Now you're looking at the front of the engines here. Featuring the engine strike, featuring the uh, air deflectors right there, and the turbo fan blade spin as well. Let's check that out. Perfect. Then you see the inboard landing light right there, as well as the front visual view of the landing bogey gears, which includes the landing gear struts as well as the landing gear doors. Now you're looking at the front of the engines here on the uh, starboard side of the aircraft, featuring the engine strike, better known as the air deflectors, and the turbo fan blade spin over here as well. Perfect. 
Then you see the inboard landing light right there as well as the front visual view of the landing bogey gears on this side of the aircraft featuring the landing gear struts as well as the landing gear doors. Now you're looking at the front of the aircraft, we got a better visual view of the cockpit windows, the windshield wipers, the Peter 2's right there below the cockpit windows, the nose cone, the uh, nose gear doors, as well as the landing gear lights inside of the nose gear doors, the landing gear struts, as well as the front visual view of the front landing gears, okay? All right, we're still on the port side of this aircraft, and what you're looking at is the wingtip devices you see there. And this wingtip devices are actually called blended winglets. And these blended winglets were actually made from composite material. And the sole purpose of these blended winglets is to improve the overall efficiency of the aircraft, resulting in saving fuel, lowering noise emission, and improving takeoff performance at the same time. These blended winglets also have a 31.9 degree sweep angle, helping to increase the cruise speed to Mach 0.85 to a maximum operating speed to a Mach 0.89. The blended wingers for the Airbus A350 were produced at the Airbus Broughton factory, known as a specialist facility, that's located in Hawarton, Flintshire, Wales, which lies in, near the border of England and Wales. And then you see the um, inboard landing, you see the, uh, the, inboard, the, uh, the, the little red uh, light right there on the edge of the wingtip device as well. Now I'm let you see the front of these engines from a 31 to Point nine degrees squeak on. Let's check it out. Now you're looking at the front visual view of the blended winglet wingtip device uh, being sh sh shown at 31.9 degrees sweep angle, as you see there. I see it curved off, which is impressive. All right, we're at the back of the aircraft here on the port side, and right below there is the AFT bolt bin door right there. You can barely see it, but it's there though. But right above the uh, AFT bolt bin door is the registration ship number B-LXA. Registration ship number B-LXA. This aircraft is the very first of 18 Airbus A350-1000XWDs that actually entered the Cathay Pacific fleet. And the first test flight on this aircraft took place on May 3rd, 2018 and was delivered to Cathay Pacific on June 15, 2018. All right, we're at the back of the aircraft still here on the port side, and right above the windows is the SWA logo. And SWA is actually a parent company of Cathay Pacific, as well as its former subsidiary, Cathay Dragon, whose global headquarters is based out of London, England, who also holds a majority stake owners as both airlines. Well, Kathy Dragon is no longer around. You know, that was done and over with like some time ago. Okay. Now you're looking at the tail fin of the aircraft. And if you didn't figure it out, the tail fin actually displays an enlarged brush wing against an all green tail. This is the same color green as displayed on the previous Gringer scheme. But now a color gradient runs along the back edge of the tail, subtly deepening the tone of the green background. In that area and additionally the brush wing appears clipped at the back of the tail you can also see the same logo on the inside of the blended wing tip device i'm going to show you that right now now you see the brush wing logo um inside of the um blended wing wing tip device and as you see there all right now you're looking at the rear of the aircraft and what you see there is the apu exhaust hole which stands for zero rear power unit and there's a hole there, as well as the two little strobe lights that sits underneath the APU is also, as well as the entire aircraft from the rear view angle. Let's check it out. There it is, everyone. The Cathay Pacific Airbus A350-1000XWD extra wide body aircraft from the rear view angle. Now you're looking at the front of the aircraft here on the starboard side, right side of the aircraft, where you see the nose cone, the nose gears, sorry about that, the nose gears, the nose gear struts, the nose gear door featuring the partial restraint ship number on the nose gear door, XA, the Peter tubes and the static ports right hat, what have you, the nose cone, more um, Peter tubes, the cockpit windows, the windshield wiper, uh, the Brushwing logo, the Cathay Pacific billboard title, as well as the front cargo containing loading door. 
Now you're looking at the center of the aircraft, what you see is the Rolls-Royce Trent XWB97 turbo fan type engines on this side of the aircraft, featuring the engine lift as well as the engine cones right there, very realistic in detail. And then you see the Rolls-Royce logo displayed on the engine column, as well as the side visual view of the landing triple bogey gears here on the side of the aircraft, featuring the landing gear struts as well as the landing gear doors. Now you're looking at the blended winglet wingtip device on this side of the aircraft, which is painted in green, including the, uh, uh, the green navigation light displayed here on this side of the aircraft as well. Now you're looking at the rear of the aircraft, where you see the uh, rear cargo containing loading door, the registration ship number, the SWI logo, as well as the, um, the logo displayed on the tail fin of the aircraft you see as well. Let's check that out. There it is, awesome. Okay, before I show you the aerial bird's eye view of this aircraft model, as well as the undercarriage belly view of this aircraft model in full detail, allow me to let you check out one feature, which is the rolling gear. Let's check it out. Oh, it rolls pretty good. Okay, oh, be careful, that nose gear. It does tilt, as you can see there, and the nose gear swivels there as well. You see there, there, and there. So, with no further ado, allow me to show you the aerial bird's eye view of this aircraft model. Let's check it out. Now you're looking at this aircraft model from the aerial bird's eye view. We're going to start at the front of the aircraft. See the nose cone, the Peter 2s, the windshield wipers, the cockpit window, the Pilescape hatch door. You see the Cathay Pacific billboard titles on both sides. You see the anti-collision beacon light, the Wi-Fi box antenna, the high frequency antenna, you slide up this way, a high frequency antenna there, and then that's the satellite communications antenna you see there, another high frequency antenna, as well as um, the tail, and then you see the horizontal stabilizers, uh, the little dot is called the luminary light, the same as over here. The sole purpose of the luminary light you see there is to light up this tail here when it flies during nighttime. Now let's check out the wings. No wing walkway, but you see the engines right there, as well as the flaps, slaps, ailerons, supporters, what have you, fuel dump valve, as well as the um, blended wing wing tip device that features the, uh, the brush wing logo painted on here. And then we come over this way. No wing walkway, but you got the engines right there. You got flaps, slaps, ailerons, supporters, what have you. There's the warning information right there. And then there's the um, flap slats around spores, what have you. There's the fuel dump valve. And then there's the Cathay Pacific logo painted on this side of the uh, blended winglet wingtip device painted in green there as well. Now you're looking at the undercarriage belly view of this aircraft model. We're going to start at the front here where it's mostly white. We see the, uh, the nose cone, the closed nose gear door, as well as the uh, open nose gear door, the nose gear, and then we slide over this way. Uh, high frequency antenna there. The anti-collision beacon light, the hole where the stand goes in at. Another high frequency antenna. And then you see the APU housing doors right there and the horizontal stabilizers right there underneath. All right, let's check out the uh, gears right here and the wings underneath. The triple bogey gears right there, tilt, pretty good. As well as the engines right there. As well as the flaps, slaps, aileron spoils, what have you. Registrating ship number, the fuel dump valve, as well as the winglet on this side of the aircraft. Now let's check out over here. Gears tilt there, perfect. As well as the engines right there, as well as the flaps, slaps, get around spores, what have you, fuel dump valve, as well as the gleaming wingtip device on this side of the aircraft as well. Okay, since I show you the aerial bird's eye view of this aircraft model, as well as the undercarriage belly view of this aircraft model in full detail, now I'm going to put it on that nice little model stand that actually came with the model you see right there. 
with no further ado everyone here is the model on the stand check it out all right i finally got this model on the stand with no problem no hesitation as you see there being displayed in the takeoff landing position uh being viewed from the port side with the model on the stand now you're looking at the front of the aircraft in the takeoff landing position with the model on the stand Now you're looking at the model on the model stand being viewed in the takeoff landing position being viewed from the starboard side of the aircraft. And finally, you're seeing this model being displayed in the takeoff landing position with the model displayed on the uh, model stand being viewed from the tail cam angle. Okay. Before I take this model stand, I got it in this position for a reason, and the reason is, it's the magnetic gears that actually came with the model, so I'm going to go ahead and take them off, starting with the front nose gear. See there, okay? The gears, triple bogey gears here on the port side, there, as well as the bogey gears here on the starboard side. They all magnetic, okay? So, with that said, I'm going to let you see this model at a different angle in flight mode position. Let's check it out. Okay, now you're seeing this model being displayed with the model and stand being displayed in flight mode position. Now, you got one or two options how you want to display your model from this point on. If you want to display it like that uh, without the gears, that's fine. But you see these gear replacing uh, doors inside this plastic bag featuring the two little toothpicks I showed you earlier. That's the sole purpose of uh, substituting your gears while you display your model in flight mode position. Or you can do what I suggest to do, which is probably a better deal to me. Keep, them on, keep the gears down and gear down position, gears up, gear down, your choice. I choose to keep mine on there because it adds more value to the model. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and put these gears back on this model, take this model stand and go ahead and wrap up this model review, okay? Alright, let's talk about the seating configuration. The Cathay Pacific Airbus A350-1000XWB extra wide body aircraft seats 334 passengers in a three class configurate cabin layout. Rows 12 to 23, which will be from here to about right here. You have 46 business class flatbed seats. Rows 30 to 33, which will be from here to about, mm, about right here. You have 32 premium economy class seats in rows 39 to 77, which will be from about right here all the way back to the rear of the aircraft. You have an additional 256 economy class seats, which brings a total of 334 seats. And finally, in addition to Taipei, Taiwan as the first validated test flight destination, as well as Washington, Dulles as the official inaugural international flight destination for this particular aircraft, Cathay Pacific currently utilizes this aircraft or have previously utilized this aircraft, the Airbus A350-1000XWB, extra wide body aircraft on routes from Hong Kong International Airport in Hong Kong to worldwide destinations such as Amsterdam, Netherlands, Bangkok, Thailand, Barcelona, Spain, Chicago, O'Hare, Jakarta, Indonesia, London, Heathrow, Los Angeles, California, Madrid, Spain, Manchester, England, Manila, Philippines, Melbourne, Australia, Nagoya, Japan, Osaka, Kansai, Perth, Australia, Rome, Fumicino, so Ichion, Singapore Changi, Tel Aviv, Israel, Tokyo, Narita, Toronto, Ontario, Canada, Zurich, Switzerland, San Francisco, California, New York, JFK, Frankfurt, Germany, Sydney, Australia, as well as Washington, Dulles. Well everyone, this will conclude this model review. I'd like to know if you got this model or you plan on getting this model for your collection. In-Flight came out with their version as well, and I think that's pretty much sold out. It ain't even been released yet. It's pretty much sold out in the pre-order phase. If you can get your hands on it, please do. I definitely highly recommend this model. So with that said, please take care. God bless. Stay tuned. There's more model content coming. Peace.